Hi, welcome to chapter three. In this chapter, we learn how to use components such as React Native Pressable and Expo Image to build a screen. We will also learn how to create custom components and then how to style everything. Let's get started. Okay, so here we are in our app. The first thing that I'll do, installing our first dependency. So I'll go ahead and close everything and stop the terminal by pressing Ctrl C and then I'll clear this. And this is how we can install dependencies. In this case, we're going to be using Expo Image, which is a package that allows us to display and load images on web, iOS and Android. So let's go ahead and hit enter to install this dependency. OK, so the dependency is now installed. So let's go ahead and start the server again by running npx expo start. I'll reload my app on my device and we can open the developer tools by shaking the device. So let me shake this and now reload. Cool. And by the way, we have there um, the splash screen that we have in the assets folder. And we also have the icon of the app, which is this one. If I uh, shake my device again, you can see that we can see the icon, which is really cool. So yeah, let's go ahead and close that. I'll go to the index screen and let's start by importing image from Expo Image, which is the library that we just installed. If you remember, guys, we also created, I mean, we also added this image and this is the one that we're going to be using. So let's go ahead and import this image. The way we do that, it's by saying cons placeholder image and we're using the required. Uh, and then we, we're, we're passing the pad to the um, image. In this case, we are going back to folders. We are getting out of the tabs and then getting out of the app. And then we are going into the assets and inside the assets, we are passing the background um, image name. Okay, so this is how we can require an image. And then down here, we can use this image component. This image is going to take a source, which is our placeholder image. And then we need to specify a style as well. So down here, after the button style, I will create this style for my image. Then we can come up here and say style equal to styles image. Great. And at this point, we are able to see the image and looks amazing. Now I'll come up here and delete this hello uh, text and then I'll create a new view. And this view will wrap this image and I'll create a container for this image. So let's go ahead and add a style and say styles.image container. And now for my image container, I'll go down here and say image container. And I just want to apply a flex of one. Now, what I'm doing here is just taking the entire available space using the flex of one. I'll come to the main container and delete this uh, style. And we also don't need this text style anymore or this button style. Okay, so this is how we can use the image component. But now what I want to do is actually abstract this image so that I can reutilize it later. That is done by creating a component. So if you remember, we have this folder components and we don't have anything yet, but components in React allows us to isolate some logic or some UI, some pieces of UI that we can reutilize over our app later. So let's go ahead and create a component for this image. I'll call this component image viewer, and then I'll create a function that it's called image viewer. Now, keep in mind that we are not putting this inside the app, right? Because if we were to put this file inside the app, that means that this would be a route and we don't want to do that. Now, um, this image viewer function, it's simply returning the same image tag that we're importing from Expo image. We're using style sheet to create this style, but there's a huge difference in here because we want to reutilize this image across our application. We are creating a property called image source. This image source is going to be changing every time that we use this component, right? So it's a good idea to create a property or variable and then pass these to the function as property or to the component and then we use the source in this image. We use the same style, but the only thing that is going to change is going to be the image source. So let's go ahead and hit save. And now let's go back to the index. And instead of having this hard coded image, we can use our image 
viewer component. So let's go ahead and import these from the components. Now we don't need to have this import anymore. And let me go ahead and delete this text. And if you remember, um, we added this property image source. That's why TypeScript is yelling at me at this moment. So let's go ahead and specify this so that TypeScript um, doesn't say anything. And we need to pass the placeholder for the image. So if I go ahead and hit save, we are able to get the same result. But at this point, we are using this component and we can reutilize this component with a different image in here if we wanted to. So let's go ahead and clear this. And now we can get rid of this image style. Now our component looks cleaner. Now another component that we're going to be using a lot in this application, it's going to be a button. So it's a good idea to create a component for this button. Let's go to the components and create a button.tsx without the S. Okay. Let's hit save and let's paste this button. Pretty much the same thing, guys. We are importing from React Native a style sheet view and a pressable. We're going to see what is appraisable in a moment. So just keep in mind that everything is coming from React Native. And then we are defining a prop as well. But in this case, it's going to be a label. I want to reutilize this component, this button with different label. So we can pass that as property. A pressable is a component that comes with React Native that allows us to react to press events. So when the user presses on this uh, basically pressable or in the content of this pressable, we are going to do an action. In this case, we're just going to put an alert that says you pressed a button. And down here, we're just doing some styling for the button container. And then we also have a style for the button. It's taking the width and height of 100%. And then we are applying a button icon and button label. Also keep in mind that the button, it's aligning the items from left to right by saying flex direction row. And justify content center align item center is going to keep the items at the center of the button and let's use this button in the index i'll get out of this view and i'll create a new view which is going to serve as my container for the footer of this screen and then i will import my component from my components so just double check that this is coming from my components and then this is yelling at me because this is expecting a property right and the property is going to be label. So let's go ahead and define this label. Label is going to be choose a photo. And as you can see here on my device, I'm able to see now this choose photo button. And if I press, you can see that we get this alert. You pressed a button. Okay, great. So this is working fine. And because this is a component, we can reutilize it with different labels. Let's create another one with a label. Use this photo. Hit save. And now we have two buttons with different properties. Let's add a style to this footer container. So for that, I'll create this style. This is how the style looks. And if we come here and add this style, you're going to see that now this footer container is taking one third of the available space. And we can double check that by providing a background color red. So this is taking a third of the available space. Let's go ahead and delete. You can do this or you can also say point. It will work almost the same way. Now I want to add some more flexibility to my button component. So let's go back to this button component. Let's add a team. So I want to have two types of components or buttons in here. We can say theme. We can grab this theme from the properties that we're getting in here. And then based on this variable, we can render a button. So what we can do is simply add an if statement. And this if statement is going to validate if the theme is primary, then we are going to enhance the style of this button. Now we also need to import font awesome from vector icons. So let's go ahead and do that. And yeah, this is how it looks. So let's go ahead and hit save. Okay, now a couple of things to notice here, guys, is that we are using a different syntax to add these styles or to complement these styles. Now let's test this out. I want to add my theme. So let's say that this is going to be primary and hit save. So if I pass this property as primary, uh, we can come here and you're gonna see that we are entering in this if statement. And now we are using the same styles that we had before, but we are adding some extra styles. 
So we can define an array of styles for each view or pressable or each item that we that we can add a style, we can pass an array and then pass uh, more styles. So for example, if you want to keep adding more styles, you can you can simply have another object in here. And because it's inside this array of styles, it's going to work just fine. And now at this point, we're able to see the power of using reusable components that accept properties, right? For example, in this, in this case, we're passing this theme. This is an optional variable and it's of type primary. So we need to specify this as primary. And as you may imagine by now, you can extend this by creating more styles and adding another theme like secondary. That's it for chapter three. We have successfully added a beautiful style for our home screen. We learned how to pass properties, how to create custom components, how to install dependencies like Expo Image, and how we can extend styles by adding an array of styles to the components. I hope you like this chapter and I'll see you in the next one.